Hello everyone! In today's tutorial, we'll be making a predictions with our Vertex AI model. There are two options to do this. First is batch prediction. This is for processing accumulated data when you don't need immediate results. Second option is online prediction, and this is for requests in response to applications input or in other situations where immediate inference is needed. This video focuses on batch predictions, so let's jump to the dataset that we will use to demonstrate the entire process. Here we can see the data that the model was trained on. We were predicting the stroke column based on all other columns except of the ID column. So as we jump to the second sheet, you can see that for the prediction we'll be using the same data with one adjustment. We remove the stroke column as this is something that we want to predict but as you can see I'm also keeping the ID column as input to batch prediction job that we'll create as we'll need this column in later stages of this tutorial. So key takeaway from this part should be the information that we can add additional columns to the dataset for prediction. Vertex AI will not use those for predictions as it was not trained on those but it will keep it in the output, so you can use those together with predictions. Our second part of this tutorial will be generally focusing on transforming raw batch prediction results into table which looks like this. So we have ID of a person and corresponding score from the model. But first, let's focus on getting the batch predictions from the model and later I will show you how you can possibly transform those into this format. All right, so let's create a batch prediction job. So first we need to import library and initialize the connection. Then we need to get model from Vertex AI. This model will make a batch prediction for us. So in order to create model ID, we need to merge project ID, location, and model ID. And remember that you can get your model ID from the models in Vertex AI. And once you choose your model, you need to go to version details and here you can see the model ID. All right, so let's get this model. Next thing that we want to do is to check supported batch prediction job input formats. As you can see, for this model, we have four and we'll use a BigQuery one. So our data set is in BigQuery table. So now I need to define required arguments for our batch prediction job. And those are job display name. I will name it as a stroke. So this was our target column. Then I have a big query source. So this is where our table lives, table which will be scored by the model. And the last is the big query destination prefix. So this is a place where the table with the results will be saved after the batch prediction job will be finished. So let's define this. And now let's run a batch prediction job. And we'll get back there once it's finished. All right, so our batch prediction job has finished running. So now let's jump to the BigQuery to see how the results look like. So inside the big query we have this new table it's called predictions and it has like later some unique string um, this is the schema of our table and the results of a job predictions are basically in this uh, nested record field called predicted underscore stroke and let's see how it looks like so here we have each class and score for each class. So this basically concludes how you create and run batch prediction job in Vertex AI. But now, if you are interested, I will be showing how to transform those results into this table. And this will do this with help of a Python in order to do this in more automated way. So because it's very simple to pull this data, we just need to use an offset method, but we want to do it inside of our Jupyter Notebook. So let's jump to the Jupyter Notebook and do it. So first, let's get uh, the output information from our batch prediction job. 
and the next uh, cells will basically focus on getting the uh, table name and also the data set name but we can't get it straight from this this variable type so we need to convert it into the string and now let's split our string let's remove double quotes from those strings and now we want to get the data set and table so this is element number two and four from our list yes and uh, generally we don't need like this um, beginning part of the data set so now we'll use the regex to get rid of this all right so we have just this um, project and data set part now let's create table id so for that we just need to merge this data set and table strings so let's do it all right so we retrieved the table name so we can confirm this so in uh, yes this is basically this table id um, so now quick import we just need to define a um, bigquery client as we'll be doing some operations in the bigquery as well so first i'm defining the query which will create a table called uh, stroke predictions in our test data sets and this is we are uh, using the same query which i was showing previously but now we are passing their uh, table id which we created here in python so it can be uh, more automated um, in the next runs of our batch prediction jobs uh, but yeah first let's define a bigquery client and now let's run this query so this runs this query let's jump to the bigquery in order to confirm that we created this table so i need to refresh the page and now we should be able to see this new table Yes, so now as you can see, I created this stroke predictions table. It was there previously, but it was the older one. But uh, yeah, we are able to create it successfully. All right, and the really last part is to delete the table with the row predictions. So this is the code which will do it. So let's run it and see after the refresh if it actually disappeared. Yes, we don't have this row predictions table there anymore. So to conclude, in the first part of this tutorial, we were able to create a batch prediction job. For input and output, we used BigQuery. But remember, you can use other sources as well. Second part of tutorial focused on transforming the row prediction table into different format in Python. And as always, thank you for watching.